محمد وآل محمد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان العين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين ثم الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيب قلوبنا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أرواحنا له فداء أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس ضرب, ضرب مثل فاستمعوا له إن الذين تدعون من دون الله لا يخلق لن يخلوا ذبابا ولو اجتمعوا له وإن يسلبهم الذباب شيئا لا يستنقذوه منه ضعف الطالب والمطلوب صدق الله علي العظيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I begin in the name of Allah the Beneficent and the Merciful and then I give my salutations and greetings upon the Prophet and his holy household Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Hajj, that is chapter 22 of the Qur'an, verse 73, he states that he has given to mankind or he has drawn for mankind parables. That parables have been sent forth, فَاسْتَمِعُولَ So take heed of them and listen to these parables. Of course, as we know that in these parables, they are great lessons of wisdom. Without doubt, as Allah SWT states, those who you call upon, aside from Allah, aside from God, will never create a single fly. And this is the parable that Allah SWT is giving, that if you call other than Allah SWT, you will see that those individuals, those people, that which you call upon other than Allah SWT will never create a single fly. Even if all of these things that are called upon besides Allah SWT join together, they will not be able to do that, to create a fly. Likewise, if the fly takes something from a person, from someone, that individual will not be able to recover that thing from the fly. Hence, feeble is the seeker and that which is sought, as Allah SWT states. In this particular parable, Allah SWT he is giving a parable about his power. In verse 74 of Surah Al-Hajj, Allah SWT, he makes this very apparent and clear, whereas he states that those individuals, they do not measure, or they cannot measure Allah's power. And they do not do justice to understanding Allah SWT's power. So on one hand, it is about Allah's power, Allah's ability to answer the call of whoever calls upon him. And he does so by giving an example or a parable about the opposite, that if you call on aside from Allah SWT, if you depend on and rely upon other than Allah SWT to meet your needs, then, as he says, ضَعْفَ الطَّالِبْ وَالْمَطْلُوبِ The one who is seeking from other than God. And that thing which is sought, or the person who your need is being sought from other than Allah SWT, they are both feeble. And he presents this in the example of a fly. And if we think of this, that no one, as he says, can create a fly. No one can create anything. Allah SWT has created everything from nothing. Without any previous model, without anything, he brought it into being. Even if today we say that some people think that they can create or make babies in a test tube or play with genetics, but they are starting from something that has a model, something that is already existing, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from nothing, he created everything. Likewise, the example of this fly, if we think of something as small as a fly, he says, if a fly takes something from you, takes a morsel of bread, takes a morsel of food, whatever it is, and you try to retain or recover that morsel of food from the fly, you will not be able to do it. 
nor would the fly be able to return it to you. So this is a very interesting parable. And what we learn from this is that we must rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost. And as we rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to seek our needs, to answer our prayers. In order to do this, one must have what is called tawakkul, to rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and trust that when we call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will answer our prayers. In a number of traditions by the Ahlul Bayt, alayhim wassalam, we are encouraged or we understand how we should call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Perhaps the best example for us is that when we go forth to pray, Imam Sadiq alayhi salatu wasalam in Misbahu Sharia, the Lantern of the Path, which has been translated into English, he states that when one approaches prayer, and of course he's speaking about the five daily prayers, but it also goes for dua. When we make dua, we can take this advice as well. He says when one goes forth to pray, then that individual should put everything out of his or her mind and focus only upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says that when we begin our prayer, one of the five daily prayers, we begin by saying Allahu Akbar, that Allah is greater than everything. He says, however, if the servant, he is thinking about other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that statement which he or she made at the beginning of the prayer, that Allah is greater than everything, has not become a reality for that individual. Because if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater than everything, then nothing should remain before that person or in that person's consciousness at the time that he or she is praying. They should think only of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, rely only upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says this is the way that prayer should be done. In the same way, we find that dua, when we supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should do this. So what exactly is this tawakkul? reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do we actually achieve this state of focusing only on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? In one narration, Imam Sadiq alayhi wa salatu wa salam, he says, everything has its measure, its boundaries, its parameters. And he was asked that what is the boundaries and the definition of tawakkul? Ma haddu tawakkul? He says, al-yaqeen, certainty. So in other words, if we go forth and we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with certainty and relying upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the ability, he has the power to answer our prayers, then we should do so with certainty and relying only on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As even the Quran states, that if one relies upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, particularly to answer his or her needs, then Allah is sufficient in that manner. And of course, as our certainty will be variant, some will have more certainty than others. As Imam Rada, he also states that certainty or tawakkul, likewise, it varies. That if I rely more on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I trust more on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when I supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then I will understand, I will know that Allah, He will answer my prayers. One of the questions that we should ask, that if we understand that by relying upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, having certainty in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, having certainty that He will be the one that responds to my call, then how do we increase this? How do we increase our certainty in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because at times, a person may doubt. He may say that I prayed and I prayed and I prayed for something. And after two days, two weeks, maybe a month, I didn't see my prayer being answered. So what do we do about this? How do we increase our uncertainty that either my prayer is being answered, my prayer has been heard by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
the Quran in Surah Al Ibrahim, verse 12, Allah Subhanahu wa poses a question that we should all pose and ask ourselves. This is about tawakkul, it's about relying and relying upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And relying upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means having certainty in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Having certainty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will provide for us, He will respond to our cause. So we, Allah says, why should we not? And he's speaking about a group of people, a group of believers. Why should we not rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he has guided us to our path, our path of belief and faith and iman? He has blessed us with this. And should we not be patient in face of difficulties when someone is bothering the believers or someone is bothering you, that why not be patient in face of these difficulties and these troubles? And therefore rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the things that we can understand from this is that in order to obtain that state of reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in order to obtain that, obtain that state of certainty, yes, a person may have to go through difficulties or what he or she perceives as difficult. At times, we may pray, we may supplicate, we may ask for something, and that thing may not be good for us. And one who has certainty, then he may, he will, or she will understand that. That though I am calling, I'm asking for something particular, and I have not found that thing, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has blessed me with other things. He's blessed me with faith. He's blessed me with iman. He's perhaps blessed me with something that is similar to what I want, and that thing which is actually better for me at that time, rather than that particular thing that I am asking for. And we see this in one of the narrations of Imam Rida alayhi of salatu salam, when he states, after he describes the state of the believer, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he brings a, or he places with the believer a spirit, a ruh, that when that soul is in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the soul, the spirit, encourages them, makes dua for that individual. But when that individual sins, then this soul or this inspiration leaves. And it returns when that soul, when that individual begins to correct himself, begins to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Imam Sadiq, Imam Rida alayhi wa salatu wa he states, فَتَعَاهَدُوا عِبَادَ اللَّهِ نِعْمَهُ بِإِسْلَاحِكُمْ أَنفُسَكُمْ تَزْدَادُوا يَقِينًا He says, if the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And actually he commands, he says, فتأحدو, that hold fast and commit yourself to those blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has provided for you. And what does he mean by committing to those things? By using those blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to you in order to self-correct yourself, in order to become a better person. He says, and when a person does this, he uses those blessings that Allah SWT has given him or her to become a better person, to correct those things which are wrong about themselves. Tazdadu yaqeenan. And that person's certainty in Allah SWT will increase. And of course, as that certainty increases, that person's reliance upon Allah SWT will, will increase. And as certainty and reliance increases, then when one makes dua, one supplicates to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he or she will understand that when I pray to Allah, Allah, he is providing me what is best for me. That what I seek is correct and what is right, and what I obtain from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also appropriate for me. And I'll end just with one of the advices of one of the Arafa, one of the living saints of today, Ayatollah Hassan, Hassan Zada Amari, that he stated in one of his books, he says, one of the best prayers that a person can make, especially when they're in need, he says, seek Allah and ask Allah SWT. Ask God that you obtain a relationship with Him. He says, because God, Allah SWT, 
He has sovereignty over everything. And so if you have a relationship with him, then he will place everything at your disposal. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives all of us success in relying upon him. May he increase our certainty. And may we make benefit from this month of dua, the month of Ramadan. As'alullah tawfiq li wa lakum wa akhir da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Oh, my God.